Yeah. Welcome back to Grapple FK, everyone. We are covering Shavkat Rachmanov against Michelle Prezeras. The no belt against the tractor. Shavkat Rahmanov is a fighter who came out of... What's that league called? M1. F1? M1. M1. Sorry, M1, which is a league around kind of Central Asia and Russia. Michelle Prezera has been in the UFC for a while. Uh, Shavkat's originally from Kazakhstan. Uh, he's got Uzbekistan down there. I'm not sure why. Maybe he was born there. Michelle's from Brazil. Shavkat's got a massive height and reach advantage. I mean, that is ridiculous. 6-1 against 5-6 is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, um, Preservas has got to be, what, the shortest welterweight ever? Apart from yeah, what, I can't think of it. Matt Serra. I don't know how tall he was. Maybe the same Matt height. Matt Serra's 5-6, five, 5-7 five, as well. Yeah, good point. Yeah. And he's also got a very similar build, obviously. Yes, yeah, yeah. both uh, very short. Yeah. Um, so Shavkat Rahmanov is, I mean, I think he's had two or three fights in the UFC. What I've seen of him, I think he's very well-rounded. Um, he's only had one, hasn't he? Has he had one? I think he's had two. Uh, we had his debut right? against Charles Oliveira. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Alex Oliveira, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, he's sorry. Only had one. Yeah, Alex, sorry. No, no, no. Sorry, yeah. Charles. Yeah, I'm, I I've, I think I've I've watched his M1 fights where he's fought some decent opposition, some guys that were in big leagues before, and he's just basically destroyed people, all finishes. Um, from what I've seen, he looks really well-rounded. Um, decent striking, good kicks. He's good on the ground, looks like he's got wrestling. Gets taken down easily sometimes, um, but he seems comfortable on the ground. Assuming he's combat Sambo from the way he fights. Um, Michelle Prezera's, um I mean, what, he was on a five or six fight win streak, Andrew? At one point, an eight fight win streak. Eight fight win streak. That's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, non-UFC and UFC? No, that's UFC. That's UFC. That is pretty... Pretty fucking ridiculous. Yeah, let me count. There's one, two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven, eight. Yeah. And oh, he's yeah, got shit. and he's yeah. got ten, 10 wins in total. He's ten and three in uh, the UFC. Yeah. And what's a north south choke? You got two north south chokes in a row. I don't know. A north south is a uh, it's a position. It basically it's looks like a, a 69er. If you're okay. Going with your uh, significant other, yeah. Um, Presumably, it's some kind of choke from from that position. Uh, I, I don't know. Okay. Okay. I, I can't. I can't picture that. But whatever. I've had a few beers. Um, and then he's got a guillotine as well. But mainly, he gets decisions in the UFC. Unanimous decisions, split decisions. He lost a unanimous decision to Kevin Lee. I mean, he's fought some decent people. He lost recently to Ismail Nordiev. Now, this kid was meant to be a huge prospect, but for some reason, he didn't carry on with the UFC. Well, he left. Yeah, he just left the UFC, and he went to... Um, I can't remember what it was. It was one of the European organizations. Strange. He just left the UFC, but he's, he's very good, the guy he lost to. He's really good, for a young guy anyway. Um yeah, he is. Well, let's talk about Preseras. I mean, Preseras yeah. is he's a jiu-jitsu black belt. Um, his, his main thing is, is obviously the takedowns, getting people to the ground, and just using pure brute strength to get people to the ground and hold them there. Yeah. Despite being a jiu-jitsu black belt, I'm not seeing any particularly slick jiu-jitsu on the ground. It's more just a sheer force of will, ground and pound, grind out a decision, heavy top pressure, that kind of thing. You know, get you against the cage, double leg you, that kind of thing. Um, rather than, you know, slick submissions. Um, yeah. On the feet, he's very explosive. His, his punches are crisp and clean and powerful. Um, but he's relying on that, that explosivity rather than precision or any you know fancy combinations or feints or countering or footwork what yeah. he does is pretty basic but it does with that explosivity it's it's effective but he's not finishing people on the feet typically 
um, no. it just explodes fours, you know, with a, a one, two, three, you know, <clears throat> and it, it, it's effective insofar as, you know, that's, that's his thing, right? Um, so overall, when I look at Bracera is he's demolishing a lot of guys. He's typically demolishing people who don't have a strong grappling base. Yeah. So you come up against a guy like Kevin Lee, who does have a grappling base, there are problems. A guy like Ismail Naldiev, who was yeah. the Austrian wrestling champion or something. Yeah, originally Chechen, so yeah, he's going to have some shit. Yeah. You know, he did manage to get Naldiev to the ground, but in most, there were a couple of times Naldiev swept him, reverse position, ended up on top, stuffed yeah. a, lot, a lot of takedowns. You know, gets taken down, but scrambles back up to his feet. And suddenly, Braceros doesn't look quite as much of a bulldozer as he does against, you know, less grappling savvy uh, opponents. So that there, that there are holes in Braceros' game. Against a certain kind of opponent, he, he looks, you know, fantastic. Um, the question is, can can he get Shavkat Rakhmanov to the ground? And what happens yeah. if he does get it to the ground? Yeah, because I have seen Shafkat Rahmanov get taken down um, fairly easily in some fights. But he seems quite comfortable on the ground. That's a double-edged sword. Uh... Yeah, it's, exactly. It's a double-edged sword. Um, but yeah, I, th I, th I think you've hit the nail on the head there. The, 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 only, the other thing I'd mention about Proceris is he's, he's pretty old, man. He's like, what, 40? Yeah, he's, th he's 39, which a welterweight is old. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you'd expect this. And he hasn't fought for two and a half years, I believe. Is it? Let, let's check that because that, that, is, that is significant. Yes. Um, because you might expect at this age yeah, that... Yeah, 2019, February, dude. That's a long time. Yes, that's two years, five months. Yeah. For someone at his age as well. So you might expect some the explosivity to have dropped a bit exactly and even if it drops a little bit that can mean a lot you know it can mean the difference between getting a takedown or not um yeah i mean so, shafgat has got good good sorry to interrupt but i mean he's got he's got decent decent grappling he does he's he not does. like he's not like a fish out of water with the grappling yeah he does and he's got i mean he's, he's got uh triangles and m1 against decent competition yeah, he's got rear naked chokes. I mean, everyone's got rear naked chokes on the record at some point. Yeah, um, but you know, doing leg triangles against decent opponents in, in M1 that, that's saying something because it's difficult to do triangles yeah. in, nowadays when everyone knows jujitsu. Yeah, exactly. and in his debut, his first appearance in the UFC against Charles Oliveira, um, yeah. he jumped into well, he submitted him via the guillotine. Yeah, and that is a dangerous thing to do because if you fuck that up, you end up on the bottom with the guy on top of you and you know you completely fucked up the submission and you're in a worse position than you were before yeah but if you play that really slowly you, you see what he does so charles Oliveira, i think he's maybe trying to get his own takedown it's Shall alex Oliveira. sorry alex Oliveira. Yeah. yeah charles Oliveira is is a different guy i know um so so shavka rachmanov is he's locking in getting his forearm under the chin before he does it, he spends a good few seconds doing that, and then he pulls guard, and then sinks in the uh, the guillotine choke. So, yeah, which was very clearly thought out. Whereas a lot of guys just kind of oh, grab gr grab the guy and then jump in, and then they completely fuck it up. So there, there's an awareness there. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I agree with that. And you combine that with you know the triangle chokes. Um, and this is the thing I haven't seen. There isn't that much fight, full fight footage of Shavkat Ragnarov, so I don't know exactly how good he is on the ground. Um, but from the, the little that I've seen, it's it's pretty good. So I yeah. think if, if Braceres, I, I don't know if Braceres can get him down, but if he does get Rachmanov down, I think Rachmanov can do enough to hold him off, try and get some space, limit the ground control time Braceres has, and maybe get back to his feet. And keep it standing for the majority of the fight. Yeah, that's kind of that. that's kind of what I'm thinking. I agree with that. And you there's, know, Rahman, sorry, carry on. There's there's also a significant element here in terms of the respective cardios because Bracera is, is a one round first round monster, and then mm. he slows down, not not to the point of exhaustion, but he definitely slows down. 
Whereas Shavkat Rakhmanov apparently has, has fantastic cardio. So I think if Rakhmanov can survive yeah. round one, Preseris is probably not getting the date downs in rounds two or three. Yeah. And I mean, to be honest, Preseris only, he has a few sub submissions on his record. He's not going to knock Shavkat out. So. I mean, Pre Preseris is, I think he's got what, some ground and pound wins. Can, can we check that? I don't know. He doesn't really have many finishes. Um, uh, he's got three subs. No, 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 oh, uh, no TKOs, oh. KOs. Yeah. Uh, I, and I don't, I don't think he can sub Shavkat. Definitely not in the first round. Um, Seems unlikely, to be honest. Yeah, it, it's, it, I think it's unlikely. And, you know, Shavkat's moved to, I mean, I follow him on Insta. He's doing some work with Henry Hoof, Sanford MMA. It's probably where he's moved to. Um, Fingers there as well. It's that guy from Kyrgyzstan that we like at 155. Uh, who? I've forgotten the guy's name now. There's another There's another guy from Kyrgyzstan at 155. He trains with him. He's really good. Muay Thai guy. But anyway, he's, he's, he's at Sanford MMA, Henry Hooft. Um, so I think Shavkat's, you know, going down the right going down the right pathway and there's there's, there's a lot of buzz around this guy and I can see why he's quite well rounded he's good on the feet as well yeah I mean in terms of striking again there's not a whole load of footage to go on um, but he has got finishes on the feet yeah. he's got ground and pound wins um, one fight I did see or at least the highlight of that particular fight guys coming towards him uh, we talk about you know go, fighting backwards a lot and how important it is and how not many people can do it. Yeah. So it's, it's guys coming forward, Shavkat, check left hook, hits him, doesn't stop him, then does it again and, and knocks the guy out. And that's a hard technique. That's not easy to do. Yeah. That's very hard to do with power. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see many people finishing people with a check left hook in MMA. No, in boxing, don't. maybe. Yeah. They're not, uh, not even in boxing. I think it's probably easier in MMA uh, with the smaller gloves. Because yeah. you have to get the glove over the guy's shoulder, which is quite yeah. difficult. There's not a whole lot of space here. Um, yeah, so he's pretty So he's pretty good. Yeah, Shafkat's pretty good. Um, and M Michelle is obviously very experienced, but old. Um, and gas is. So let's get on to predictions. What are you thinking, Andrew? I mean, it's, it's got to be... I mean, you can't write off Prezera's, but... No. Get, uh, you've got to give it to Shavkat Rachmanov, the younger man, cardio for days. Yeah. Very well-rounded, can probably handle himself on the ground, should it go to the ground. Definitely has the advantage on the feet, in my opinion. It, yeah, it's, it's Shavkat all, all day. Yeah, I think Shavkat as well. I think Shavkat will... I think Shavkat will finish him. Got 13 finishes. He finishes people, this guy. And with Prezeris's cardio, I think he could finish him at probably round, round two or round three. Prezeris has never been finished. Yeah, but he's, he's, uh, he's pretty old now. And I think it's going to get to the point What he's never been finished in his career on the UFC. Literally never in his career. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I'm still going to go with a Shavkat finish. Fuck it. Yeah, I, I, I would say Shavkat decision. I would say Shavkat decision. Um, and in terms, of, in terms of the parlay, what are you thinking? I was thinking safe for this. Well, what do you think the odds are? Uh... That's a good point. Uh, that's a good question. I've had a few beers, everyone. Um, uh, minus two hundred, maybe Shafkat. I gotta, I gotta find this. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, find that, Andrew. Okay. Um, the Kazakh massive. What are the odds? I've got to convert the odds because I can't. Uh, I, I can't do maths. Okay, so what do you say? Minus two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Minus two two five. Minus two two five. 
Yeah, I'll stick him in a safe, I think. I, I, I think Shafkat will win this. I think he's got way more way more ways to win it as well. Yeah, this is uh, probably one for the safe. The caveat is that we haven't I haven't actually seen that much footage of Shafkat. No, no, we haven't. That's a good point. That is the caveat. Um, and Preseris has done very well when very well in the UFC. He's done very well. Yeah. The yeah. you know in the uh Alex Oliveira fight, um I think Shaka might have got a little bit lucky because the, the start to the finishing sequence was him kneeing Oliveira in the stomach or something. Yeah. Or or the head, perhaps might have been the head. I think it was the head. But I th- I think basically Oliveira basically ducked. Uh, as if to go for the takedown, and just by pure luck, Shavkat was kneeing him at the same time. I don't think that was a planned thing. So Oliver is, you know, he's rocked, he stumbles, he's against the cage, and Shavkat, you know, starts, you know, firing off punches against the cage. Yeah. So maybe a little bit lucky there. Um, fighting is fighting, man. Like, if someone's trying to knee you and you're trying to duck, then probably not a good decision. <laughs> Yeah, I think that the way that worked was Shavkat, you know, yeah. kind of went for a pretty lazy kind of knee. Yeah. Then, a, you know, a split second after, Oliver is ducking and just kind of hits his head on it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Ducking, I, f- I find people ducking quite weird sometimes, like in the UFC, like they'll duck and I think, why are you doing that when you know a knee could come out of nowhere? Even if it's not planned. I mean, in MMA, it's just suicide. Yeah, it really is. It's just like, why are you ducking? Yeah, I mean it's easy for me to say in my fucking chair with a Heineken, but still, <laughs> what is that job to do analysis? <laughs> well, I bet you don't do this in your MMA training, Willie. You don't. Well, fucking I haven't like done these fucking for a while. I'm I'm starting on Sunday again properly, so watch out for me, everyone. Yeah, I, I can only imagine it's because you know these guys are they've picked it up in boxing and they haven't quite yeah managed yeah, to go of it, you know. Yeah, yeah because you can, you can you can duck under punches, right? And that, and exactly that ties into boxing, but then the knee comes out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've got Shavkat. Shavkat the Kazakh. Yeah, I, I probably put him in the safe come come in the safe parlay. Um, yeah, I, I'd be surprised okay. if Preseros can win. Uh, you can't write him off. Yeah, there's, there, there's a way for him to win. It, I mean, it'll be a decision. I don't think he could submit Shavkat. Yeah. But Briseris is one-dimensional. He's a one-trick pony. He's a bulldozer. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, if he can get him down and keep him there, um, which I don't think he can, but if he can get him down and keep him there for like two rounds, get off... I don't think he pound. can keep him there. That's the thing. I mean, that that's the way he could win, though. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, that that that's that's it for this fight. Have you have you looked at any other fights? No, I, I, was, um, I looked at the odds for Volkov versus uh, Gan. Who do you think is yeah. the favourite for that? It must be Gan, right? Everyone's hot on him. He's it so is. hot right now. He's yeah. so hot right now. Uh, he really is. I was. But, like, I mean, Volkov is dangerous. Very this is the thing. Yeah, I was surprised that Gan is is the favourite. Yeah, Volkov is really dangerous. I mean, yeah. if you look at who uh, Volkov has fought and beaten. Yeah. I mean, even against... I mean, he was fucking Derek Lewis up until the last 10 seconds as well. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I... People are hot on Gan because obviously he's trained with, like, Nganu and he's very well-rounded and stuff. And he looks like a fucking Greek god, but... Um, Volkov's really dangerous... And what, what, what is Volkov plus what? I might put a bet on him. Uh, let me have a look. Tanner Bosa against OSP. OSP's at heavyweight again. Okay. Volkov plus 125. Plus 125. A slight underdog. Okay. I'm not saying Volkov will win. I, I was just surprised at those odds. Yeah, oh, but th- there are definitely ways for him to win. Actually, to be fair, I mean, I, I forgot that Gan actually beat Rosenstroy, didn't he? And Junior Dos Santos. So, yeah, that makes a bit more sense. Yeah, but I mean, Volkov's so long, dude. He's what, seven foot? Six foot seven? Six foot eight? Sorry, not seven foot. Six foot eight? Six foot seven? 
tall, that's whatever gonna, he is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's going to pose a problem, and he's got a good takedown defense as well. Mm. It's an interesting clash of styles. You've got either the long karate kickboxing thing in Volkov versus like the, the sideways karate taekwondo thing in Gan. So it would be an interesting striking battle. Yeah, Gan's probably more well rounded. Have you, have you seen Gan on the ground? Yeah, he's pretty good. He's pretty Is good it? everywhere. Yeah, he's pretty good everywhere. Uh, he doesn't get many finishes though, Gan. He's cautious. Which is which is a problem at heavyweight. If you don't get finishes at heavyweight, I think Dana White kind of that pisses Dana White off. Yeah, yeah. Heavyweight, you really should be getting finishes. Well, I I think Gan he's methodical. I think he's got a game he plan is. and he sticks to he it. And he, and yeah, he, he knows is. what he's doing in terms of winning each round, whether he's not yeah. that kind of thing. And you and I respect that, but you know, a lot of fans won't, particularly at heavyweight. Heavyweight, mm -hmm. you just people just want to see knockouts. But yeah, I have I haven't looked at anything else. Um, I've got a boy Jay Herbert fighting Renato, Renato Maicano. That'll be an interesting fight. Jay Herbert. Oh, he he's the skinny guy, right? Yeah, yeah, the Brit. Um, he could win that. Maicano's beatable. Pretty old as well now, isn't he? He's pretty. He's been a, he's been about put it that way. Andre Feely's back. Tanabosa against OSP. That'd be interesting. OSP. I feel like OSP should retire. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think that's it for this. So I, I've got Shavka. I'm 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 gonna say. I'm gonna say Shavka's gonna finish this dude in round two. Are you saying that because you're a fellow Borat? No, but you know. And you want you, to unify that, the whole of Central like Asia? Like racism, I have to now get that <laughs> out, out to the Kazakh nation. Salem Kalaisen, thank you for watching, Rahmet. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with Shafkat. Uh, I'm going to go with TKO KO round two. Okay, all right. I'm going to say Shavkat Rachmanov uh, decision win fairly fairly comfortably I would say yeah I, I don't I don't yeah yeah 6156 come on man like I hasn't stopped him before I mean the tractor gets it done <laughs> the tractor hasn't fought in two and a half years for him the tractor's going to get some Borat treatment made don't worry about that he's <laughs> going to get the tractor's going to get ploughed <laughs> I've had to use this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. It'll be it'll be interesting to see how good Shafka is because there's a lot of uh there's a lot of oh Fiziev, that's it. Fiziev just came to mind. The other Borat, Fiziev, he trains with Fiziev. The kickboxer, yeah. 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 yeah, he's under he's under Henry Hoof now as well at Sanford MMA. So all these yeah. Russians and Central Asians and uh, people from the Caucasus are like moving to America. Yeah. To like train in like extreme couture or Sanford MMA or um, American top team. I mean, you have to in a way, right? It's very difficult to not be in America unless you're in Brazil, Russia, maybe to an extent the UK as well. I think the UK, we can produce kind of decent talent in the UK. But even then, Bisping moved to America and he's, yeah. he's been our only champion. I don't think we've got the right infrastructure for MMA. To be no, honest. we don't have wrestling. That's the key component. I keep saying this. We need to defund football and start a collegiate wrestling team. No one yeah. listens to me. <sighs> right to your MP, what, Walid. What can I do? What can I do? No one listens to me. Yeah. But um, Yeah, okay. All right. Well, we've done this one. Uh, we'll cover more fights in the on the next card. And I believe the next card is Connor and... Uh, Poirier. We talk about that quickly. How does that go? How how does that go down? I don't. I I think Poirier is going to beat him again. I know Connor did well in the first round, but I I just think Connor is not training properly anymore. I think Poirier is. If Connor brings, if, if Connor hasn't changed something, then Poirier probably wins. I but, think if Connor hasn't changed something, Poirier definitely wins. 
Because if he's yeah. not checking those leg kicks, he's fucked. The, the, yeah, true. Yeah. And, and Poirier, Poirier ate some big, clean shots. He did. Yeah, I was surprised. Connor hit him clean. Yeah, and he took them. Yeah. And, and maybe there's a question about what's, you know, what's happened with Connor's power. Because who has he really finished at 155? He finished... Eddie Alvarez. Alvarez. Well, Cowboy, I'm not even going to include. Everyone's finished Cowboy. He finished Eddie Alvarez for the lightweight title, but that was it. Eddie, but that was ages ago, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, we don't really know how much power McGregor has at 155. Yeah. Exactly. But he was landing some clean shots in the first round. In, yes. until the, until the leg kicks kind of i mean you know what I, I this this is this is contentious but i don't think it was a particularly good performance from both as in it wasn't i think connor did better than him in the first round but i mean even the way pore finished him it was pore was missing a lot of shots it was very wild i thought mm. i don't know i i don't know i i didn't think that was the most kind of clinical fight but Pupore can be a little bit messy. Yeah, he can, yeah. Um, I was actually going to order his hot sauce the other day. Apparently, it's very good. Uh, I don't know. I think Pupore is going to win again. Just just because, like, McGregor, that dude, the guy's worth, like, 500 mil now. I, I mean, mm. you know, it's, I, I just think that's too many distractions for him. He's probably not training properly. When was the last fight? Is his leg healed? He took a lot of damage to that leg. Yeah, it, it'll be healed now. Yeah, it'll yeah. healed by now, right? Yeah. Um, but where, where does he even train in, in Ireland? He, yeah, SPG Island. I mean, and and also, you know, we've we've talked about this before. You've got that stance and you've got that way of fighting for for a decade or over a decade. You can't just suddenly just change it for one fight. How's he going to change it? He's still going to be susceptible I, with the leg kicks. I remember saying that about Max Holloway when he lost the first fight to Volkov. How do you change your entire style to stop getting... Volkanovski, yeah. Volkan yeah, I'm terrible with names today. Yeah, uh, yeah how do you change your style to stop that like lead he, leg from, from yeah. getting hacked? And yet Holloway yeah. came back and he changed his style and he did not I get think, that lead leg hacked. I, well, I mean, H Holloway is... I'm not saying he's more naturally talented than Connor because Connor's very naturally talented, but... Holloway trains his fucking ass off daily and he's not out doing cocaine and fucking random women and punching old men. So, uh, I don't know. I just, I just don't think Connor's training properly. I don't think he's training properly anymore. Yeah. And, and who, who's in that fucking camp? Who's he training with? He exactly. trains with, exactly. he trains with, uh, that guy who's only got two fights that, that has 2 million followers and comments on everyone's, Insta, what's his name? What Dylan Dennis? Oh, yeah, Dildo Dennis. Like he trains with him. He's only had two MMA. All right, brilliant. He's a, a, a jujitsu champion. He's only had two MMA fights. Why are you training with him? Whereas Poirier's fighting, training with Masvidal. He's training with that that guy from Dagestan who's twenty six and two. He's like a Bellator champion. He trains with some other guys. Like he's training with serious people day in day out. Who's Connor training with? In Ireland, who is there? Not big names. No. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm leaning towards Poirier again. I, th I, I think you have to. I think you have yeah. to. But I wouldn't be surprised if Connor KO'd him. I mean, good, Connor still Connor. That, yeah, yeah. That left hand if he just still, came out and uh, KO'd him, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I mean, uh, that, that ungodly understanding of range. Yeah. And baiting you in. That left hand is money, man. Yeah. Baiting you in and countering you with that left hand, that, uh, that that's probably not going to disappear. No, no, never. I mean he, he, he caught he caught him pretty hard a few times in the first round. Mm, he did, yeah. Landed did. clean. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I mean it'll be interesting to see because I think if Connor loses, what happens with him? I, I, is, he, is he done? He's probably done in MMA. The whole brand has just gone up. In a, MMA, the brand's gone, and then he'll probably go and do like a boxing fight against fucking Jake Paul or someone. For yeah. 100 million. Probably. Yeah. 
And then I'll just fall back on his business interests and probably just do drugs. Yeah, he's worth like half a billion now, right? Yeah. So his stake in proper 12 or whatever. Yeah, sit on a yacht and do drugs. Exactly. Know. Why not? Great life. Double champ. Still a double champ. Yeah. Never defended his belts, but he won them. So it's a shame, though. It's a shame to see that kind of talent kind of, you know. Um, I don't know. I think I, th I think he could have he could have been even even he could have done even more than he's done. Well, yeah, you had too much success too quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd have a lot more respect if he just had a longer career, grinded it out, defended the belts, and even if he had a, a loss here and there, as he's had, he'd still be a legend. But because he's picked himself up to be this larger than life thing. Yeah. When you lose, it just doesn't work. I think he really yeah. fucked up against in the Khabib fight when he was trying to do the whole gangster stuff and attack the bus and, you know, say I'm this and that and I'm Irish and we fought the British and all this crap. And when it kind of fucking fell back on him after that, a lot of people lost respect for him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, taking the piss off Khabib's wife. Yeah. Calling her uh, like, like a... A bed <laughs> sheet or a something. Towel. It's like a, a towel. Like, what did he say? Yeah, congrats, Khabib. Funny, you married a towel. Yeah. Like it's funny. But... It's funny, but it's it's kind of like when you talk that much shit, you have to back it up. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You're talking that much shit, you have to back it up. But against Poirier, he was very nice. He didn't do any of that. It's all hugs and fucking handshakes. Which I don't like to see from Connor. I don't like that. I don't like that Connor. I'm not saying he should offend people's religions and all that crap, but I like the old Connor when he was just ripping people to shreds. I like that Connor. Khabib humbled him, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, he probably. He couldn't come out, you know, being the old Connor and have any credibility, you know. He's still the old Connor on Twitter, though. Uh, even it doesn't Mad shit on Twitter. It doesn't, it doesn't work anymore, though. It doesn't. Have... Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I was a fucking Connor nut rider, and then um. Well, you you ride. I, I do. Nuts. I do enjoy a fucking train, don't I? You do. You fucking love hype a hype train. train. I do love a hype train. But, Are you still on the Masvidal hype train? I still like Masvidal, man. Even I though he's, he's lost. He's lost, but I mean, he's lost to someone who no one can beat at 170. So, I mean, is that really any shame in that? He's going to beat him. He's going to beat the same about Connor. But... Yeah, but Connor's never defended the belts and stuff. Right? Oh, Connor against Khabib, you mean? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. No, but then Connor lost against Nate and, you know, who else did true, Connor true, lose against? True, true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was a weight division up, but. Nate's not exact. I mean, I know people are gassed about Nate, but Nate is not an elite fighter. I'm sorry to all the Nate Diaz wait, fans wait, out wait, there. Wait, wait, wait. Well, hold up, hold up. I've, I've got a, I've got an interesting question. This, this, this is maybe kind of obvious. Yeah. But in MMA, with the current with the MMA rule set as it is, Nate Diaz will struggle to win, right? Because he's, he's kind of got pillow hands, and. Yeah. He relies on cardio and the later rounds in order to win. Yeah. The thing is, if MMA didn't have rounds and it was just a fight to the death, Nate Diaz would win. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Nate Diaz wins all the fucking time. Unless he gets cut and you can't see from because of the blood pouring down his eye or some shit. Yes. Yeah. But let's say that it's a 30 minute fight. Yeah. His cardio is going to hold up. His opponent will be dying of exhaustion. Nate yeah. Diaz will fucking win that fight. 100%. His, his opponent will have to finish him. And he's only been finished twice. Masvidal yeah. and Josh Thompson. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, even against Masvidal, it was because of the cut. But, I mean, I think... I think Masvidal would have TKO'd him eventually. He was fucking lighting him up. I, I don't know if, if Diaz is finishable. I just don't know, man. You're lighting him up, man. He knocked him down twice as well. Like I, I know what you mean. He's 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 a zombie. He's a, he's he's a zombie. He he should be called a zombie. 
He should be called yeah. the zombie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, the zombie from where the fuck's he from again? That Stockton. place in California. Stockton. Stockton. Yeah. Stockton Slap. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, no, I, no, 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 I agree with that. I agree with that. No, I like Nate. I just don't understand this whole. You know, he's not elite. He's not an elite fighter. I'm sorry. I'm the sorry to all is, the Nate fighters. But the thing, you know, he. I think what you're alluding to, he talks like he's an elite fighter. He's he's fucking delusional. He's like but, me and my brother but, were the best fighters in the world. No, you're not. But hold up, hold up. I I think maybe he understands if there were no rules and there was no there were no rounds, he would win every fucking fight. Maybe that's where he's getting his his mindset from. Dude, let me tell you something. If he fights Usman, Usman will KO him. I guarantee you. Usman will KO him. Yeah, maybe. Masvidal has got a chin. Has never been KO'd 50, 50, 49 fights, and he KO'd him in one shot. Usman Nate might finish him. Usman might, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That right hand of his is something else, man. Now, anyway, after what Trevor Whitman's done with him. Yeah, it is, it is, yeah. 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 But um, Usman's still a dork. That's the main thing. Uh, yeah, I think that's it, really. That's, that's the wrap up. Sick. Have you got a message for our fans in Kazakhstan? I, I, I already said hello, how are you, and thank you. But um, thank you for watching. Every, everyone in Central Asia, you are our main fans. But so, so thank something you. in Persian, Walid. Say something in Persian. Persian? What do you want me to say? Just say thanks for watching. We love you. Tashakur. Um, yeah, I just said thank you very much, and then I'll, I'll, I'll say I'll say in Kazakh again. Um, just hello, how are you? Salam, Kalaisen, uh, Rahmat. That means thank you. Uh, thanks for watching, um, everybody in Central Asia, all the Central Asia countries, all the Caucasus countries. We're coming for the belts. Thank. Yeah, and everybody else, thank you. Andrew, speak some Spanish and Portuguese. Give it to all the fans. Oh Christ! I haven't spoken Spanish for for a long time. We'll just do it, man. Hola a todos, gracias por uh, ver este podcast. Uh, agradecemos mucho uh, su apoyo y nos vemos pronto. Hasta luego. Sí, 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 sí. Do you know any Portuguese? No. No. Nope. I thought it was similar, but apparently not. It is, but I can't, I can't speak Portuguese. And to half the world who speak the best language in the world, best language on earth, English, thank you for watching. Subscribe and like. Bye, and we'll see you soon.